Thank you, Father, for your holy word. I yield the spirit unto you. I yield this vessel unto you. And I thank you, Lord God, for taking the time out to speak to us individually and collectively. We thank you in Jesus' name. This is a very familiar passage. However, no matter how many times you read the word and you read the same passage, when you reach particular seasons in your life, God can give you new revelation out of a verse that you've read 4,000 times. Amen. And that's because he's God. So I'm going to be reading to you from John, the fourth chapter. As a matter of fact, uh, overseer, come read for me. My eye doesn't feel that well, but I'm not going to let that defeat me. So if you would go to John, the fourth chapter, and be, begin reading at the first verse for me, I would appreciate it. And if you all would read with him. Please read with him. John, the fourth chapter, beginning at the first verse. John 4, beginning at verse 1. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee, and he must needs go through Samaria. Mm -hmm. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Mm -hmm. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Stop. So at about the sixth hour, Jesus sat by the well. And this woman had not arrived, but he waited for her. As a matter of fact, he knew she was coming to the well because it said he had need to go to Samaria. Now, that was the King James that said he had need to go to Samaria. In the Amplified, see, here we go with this small print, but I'm going to make it through this. It says it was necessary for him to go through Samaria. So he didn't just stumble up on this lady. This was very deliberate. And I had you to come and sit up here, Evangelist Darden, because God wants me to tell you that it's not coincidental that you have come to a healing ministry. You, you didn't just stumble up on the citadel of prayer. He's ordering your steps. Now, I took him out there, and we talked about an evangelistic effort that we're going to do in the inner city. And he was going on about how he had to go to dialysis and all of that. And I really, I wanted to stop you then and say, how do you know you're going to be going to dialysis Amen. that day? In an instant. You can be healed. Hallelujah. He had the whole schedule. He told me the whole <laughs> schedule about how he was going to dialysis. I wanted to stop you, but I just thought I'd let the anointing come and let God speak to you directly and tell you that you don't need to go to dialysis. That's the medical solution. I just want you to understand that. All right. 
that we didn't have any water in the house. I went and looked in the refrigerator, and there was no water in there. But that's okay. This this going to be our well today. <laughs> I saw, uh, I think, a Sprite, <laughs> a ginger ale. I saw some RC. <laughs> Verse 5, then come ye to a city of Samaria, which is called, I read that already, but I'll mm -hmm. read it again, which is called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Mm -hmm. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, give me, a, give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Mm -hmm. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto him, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Then the woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From hence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our fathers Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Yes, Stop. In the Amplified it reads, Jesus answered her, All who drink of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever takes a drink of the water that I will give him mm -hmm. shall never, no, never yes, be thirsty Thank anymore. You, but the water Jesus. I will give him Hallelujah. shall become a Thank spring Jesus. of water, Jesus. welling up, mm -hmm. flowing, bubbling, continually yes, yes. with him unto into for eternal life. Yes, yes. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water me this so that I may never get thirsty nor have to come continually all the way here to draw. Now, Evangelist Darden, you sit right there and Brother Joe, you come and sit at the well. Now at this well, this is just figurative of the Holy Spirit. That once the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you, you won't have need to go to a physical well to draw. She, she thought she needed to do that. She didn't quite get it when he first started talking to her. He, she going on about Jacob's well and all, all of this. But he was trying to convey something else to her. And he's trying to convey something else to you, Joe. See, he's given you a number of challenges He's given you some physical challenges. He's given you some emotional challenges. 
You know, in a lot of different areas, he's challenged you. But he's telling you all you have to do is come to that well. Come to the well. He had a need. And I, don't, I don't know where you're from. I know you came from out of state. It doesn't really matter. He had a need to go to Michigan and bring you here. He had a need to go to Silver Spring and bring you here. Prophetess, he had a need to go all the way to Nigeria and bring you here. He had a need to go to Baltimore and bring... See, see, we, a lot of times when we read passages, we keep thinking about Samaria, but Samaria is really you. That's it, that's it. For some reason, all oh, within the last year or so, he's been taking me through Samaria. One day he had me to get on a bus. And I never ride the bus. If I'm on the bus, I'm on there for 10 minutes or so and I get off the bus. I'm not on there long. But he had me to get on a bus. And I mean this bus ride seemed like the longest journey. He took me all through the city because he wanted me to go through Samaria. The first woman who got on the bus said, you lying bee. She wasn't talking to me, thank God. <laughs> but she was talking to another woman on the bus. Now one thing I like about going through Samaria is people tell it like it is. I'm not too fond of church folks because they phony. me. From the moment I got on that bus to the time I left, they read each other. And, I'm, and they just would go up to each other. And I'm going to tell you what you did and it wasn't right. See, the word of God says if your brother or sister offends you, go to him. Joe, don't go to prophetess and tell her. You come to me if you got a problem with me. I saw that. On, these were heathens. They wasn't no household of God, wasn't no anointing in there, nowhere. But she said, you lying bee. You told me you were going to do thus and so, and you didn't do it. And I ought to whoop you at a woo, and at that point, the, the bus driver stepped in. Because she didn't want it to get out of hand, because they, they really know how to take over. The bus driver said, okay, then no gonna be not gonna be any profanity on here. Oh, I'm sorry, bus driver. Oh, I'm so sorry, bus driver. You know, she brought it right on down. See, you any little nasty ways you have, you can control. Because this was a heathen, and as soon as the bus driver said, stop the profanity, she brought it right on down. Don't talk about you can't control them spirits. This lady was operating with more spirits than I've seen in a long time. And at the command of the bus driver, she brought it on in. Then we rode a little bit further. Then another lady gets on. See, this, was, this was intoxicated. I'm telling you, you got to go through hell on the buses. She gets on the bus. I mean, she could hardly speak. I was like, boy, we're going to get an intelligible word out of this one. <laughs> and so she sits there. It's another man across from her. See, this was amazing. And he said, I, you better shut up. He didn't give a chance to speak. These heathens know how to take authority over spirits better than Christians do. Yes, sir. He said, you shut up. Yeah, and, and then she tried to get rowdy, and he said, go on, get off the bus. And she said, how am I going to get off? He said, you get out the window if you want. I said, oh. <laughs>
that was good. It was really good teaching. And one of the things that God showed me, that he is so tired of this hypocritical mess, this lack of power that we operate under, even though he's given us the power. There was not one person on there confessing Jesus, not one. Yet they took authority over spirits. They understood how to come under command at a spoken word easily. This man and this intoxicated woman, their spirits didn't agree. And he was determined he was going to get her in line the whole ride. I was like, boy, I'd be glad one of them get off here. <laughs> the entire ride. So the bus driver, I guess she felt relieved because she said, this is one I ain't got to try to take control over. He already got this one. Then he decides that even after he got off the bus, I watched him. I wanted to see what he was going to do. He gets off first. He said, I'll throw this walker. Don't you? He had a walker. Check this out. I'll throw this walker aside with you Oh, this, is rough, this is a rough group. <laughs> I said, this is a rough group. And he said, come on, step off that bus. He was ready for it. Oh, he stood there. I watched the expression on his face. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, they was, they was, they was general spirits up in there. They had command over each other's spirits. You hear me? That's Satan's kingdom. Yes, sir. Yes. I'm telling you, you don't know your power. Mm -hmm. And they will subject to the authority of the Holy Spirit, but you got to know what you're doing. That's right. That's right. That's right. That spirit in her would not come up against the spirit that was in him. It was scared. She came right on <laughs> death. Then when it got time, he was gone. Then she kept on growling, and she started hollering. Ow! That bus driver said, you holler one more time. I'm putting you off. <laughs> she, she was tired. I could tell that lady was tired. She was like, I ain't going through this. <laughs> so she brought it on down. she was hollering is because she was so intoxicated she couldn't figure out where to get off. <laughs> so every time it looked like it was getting close to her, stop, ah! You know, I was like, golly, everybody was like, please get off. I bet. <laughs> so she said, either you getting off at this stop right here or you going all the way to the train station. So the lady, she's just off. She's staring. Yeah, yeah, that's the one I want. I don't know how long it took her. It's way too long. It's going to take you about 10 seconds to get off the bus. It probably took her a minute. But they were so glad and relieved. Everybody was relieved to get rid of that noise. They were willing to wait. So she did get off. And the thing, Evangelist, that I wondered, with her condition, and I'm going to check this out. I bet you it's a shelter right there in that section. Okay? Because I don't believe this lady could sustain her life in that condition that she was in. I really don't. Okay. And I'm going to look a little further. I told you he took me through Samaria for a reason. He didn't have me to go on that journey for no reason at all. Mm -hmm. So that, that raised a concern for me. Because I said, these are people that are in our communities, and this was all inner city. Mm -hmm. You get an entirely different culture oh, yes, when you sir. ride the bus in oh, Maryland yes, or in Virginia. Yes, the sir. inner city yes, bus, you will get a whole different culture. That's why he didn't take me on Maryland bus. <laughs> he took me through D.C. That's the way you go in Maryland. <laughs> yeah, some parts of Maryland. That's true. I agree. I agree. That's true. That is true. Certain sections. So at any rate, I go on through this journey through Samaria. 
And this was an eye opener. I know what that was all about. You know, you can really get caught up in your world, your little family, you getting up, going to work. See, really, we are not doing ministry, okay? Because we're getting up, we're going to our job, which is fine. We're taking care of our family, and we're coming back home. Mm -hmm. We go to church on Sunday. Ain't, ain't none of them people in here, but they all need Jesus. He ain't in here. We passed them on the way coming here. So we're really not reaching them. Now, I have a concern that there has to be some shelters. Now, one lady who was talking, the one who was, I'm going, you know, Miss B, the, the one, she, 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 I mean, she really had it in for that sister. I was so glad that the lady was like way in the back. She seemed to have a family structure because I could just tell from her conversation she was talking about she was going to go home and she was going to clean some chitlins. All right. Okay, you ain't doing that in no shelter. Uh -uh. She was going to clean some chicken, some chitlins, and she was going to cook some collard greens and right. fried chicken. Okay, ain't no shelter. That ain't happening up in no, no shelter. <laughs> And the other guy said, uh, well, won't you, um, he had a nerve to try to tell her what to do. He was like, well, well you ought to go on the Murray's and get some steak. I ain't going no more. I said, oh, boy, why do you do that? I ain't going to no Murray's. I know where I'm going to get my food. I said, okay, you better back up off of that. <laughs> so he, he, you know, he came right on down. He, he ain't even go there no more. He just left that alone. These people were very determined about what they wanted to do, okay? Where they wanted to go, they understood order. There's a ranking order in the spirit world. But you got to understand what that is. In order to take authority, all right? Getting back to Joe. Joe... Jesus has sat by the well waiting for you. Just as this woman came and she could have really asked for anything that she wanted. To, but she didn't really understand who she was. She didn't really get it. That's true. And he says, sometimes you don't get it. And he says, I'm not saying that to embarrass you, but I want you to understand how precious you are to me. You can ask for anything that you want. Anything. There's no limit. No limits. You've had experiences that other people have never had. So you can minister in a way that evangelists can't minister, or prophets, or overseer, or pastor. You, you, you can minister in ways that we don't even have any idea because we haven't had that experience. You see it as a deficit. All right. Now, where were we? Over here. The woman saith, 15, the woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus saith unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, thou hast, thou hast well said, and have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou know hast, and, and he 
whom thou now hast is not thy husband. And, the, and that said, says thou truly. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Yes, sir. Ye worship ye know not, ye worship ye know not what, we know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is, when the true worshiper shall worship Hallelujah. the Father in spirit and in truth. Yes, yes. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah come, cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Stop. Okay, now Brother Joe, you sit in the other chair, and Prophetess Irene, you come on. You sit right there. Okay. Now Prophetess Irene, you haven't had five husbands. You've only had one. He says, but what you and this woman have in common is this woman had an emptiness. And he says, so you. There's a place that is void. And the voidedness, it comes from the lack of nurturing from your parents. So that leaves an emptiness. There's a void there that only Jesus can fill. See, he, he wants to give you that living water that he's talking to her about. That no matter what somebody has said to you, no matter what your parents have said to you, no matter what they've told you that really is he can fill it. Every empty place, he can fill it with his spirit. That is the living water. That is the place where you thirst no more. It's not really about mommy or daddy, because mommy and daddy too are empty, and they need. The only reason a parent can't pour into you is because they don't have anything to give. They're giving back what was given to them. If love was passed down, then they can pass it on. But if the cup is empty, then they pass on the empty cup. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people come into the knowledge of God and then that changes. But if they just stay in a mode of religion, not really coming to know God in the fullest sense, then they can't change courses. And so the pattern keeps repeating itself. Okay? So that, that's what he gave me on that. You stay right there at the well, because he may not be finished. Okay, overseer, continue on. And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman, yet no man said, What seeketh thou, or why talketh thou with her? The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the men, Come see a man which told me all things that, I, that ever I did, is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he saith unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him aught to eat? Jesus saith unto them, 
My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, yes, and to finish his work. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth received wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together, and herein that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored, and ye are entered into their labors. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him, from the saying of the woman which testified, he told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. And many more believed because of his own word, and said unto the woman, Now we believe not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Stop. They did not believe just because the woman came to tell them. That's right. You're not going to just believe because overseer preaches the word, uh -huh. because I preach the word, because prophetess preaches the word, because evangelist preaches the word. And when Joe starts preaching, you have to experience this thing for yourself. It is very personal. It is fine for somebody to come and say, oh, the Lord, you know, what he did for me, yes, you know. And, and matter of fact, we, we, we often have a, a testifying services and people will get up and, and let me tell you what the Lord, and you'd be like, okay, he did that for you, you know. But I still need a healing, you know. Yes. And, and all that's good, and we need to encourage each other. But we have to experience this ourselves. At this well is a place where you will never thirst again. Praise God. Praise God. Praise you have no business thirsting. That's right. You have no business walking into the sanctuary craving for somebody to hold you, somebody to need you, somebody to love you. Because really, if you've been in the presence of God, I don't really need to come in here for somebody to do what God has already done. There is a fountain. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. That springs up. Yes, sir. Continuously. Yes, sir. This is not water that you get in a glass. Yes, we sir. didn't have no water that night, so if we were living off of that, we'd be gone. All right. There ain't no water. Water that you drink out of a cup, you know where that eventually ends up. It don't even stay in the body. It just runs right through. All right. And if you don't drink enough water, eventually you're going to get dehydrated. Right, 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 right. And your body's going to start to give some responses as a result of not having this natural water. All right. But he's not talking about water coming out of the faucet or coming out of a well that man built or water coming even up out of the ground. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's yes, sir. not even talking yes, about sir. the water that he yes, sends sir. down from heaven, the rain that replenishes yes, the yes, reservoir. Yes, he's yes, not sir. talking about that water. He's talking about living water. That's right, living water. That's gushing out. Yes, sir. Continually out of your spirit. Yes, sir. See, uh, many of you can't really understand this kind of water because, you know, you, you have received Jesus in your heart, but you haven't received the Holy Ghost. All right, all right. And, and we get so many different teachings on the Holy Ghost right. that sometimes people get confused. Uh-huh. You, you get one doctrine that says, well, you know, you have to be baptized with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And, and you get another group that says, well, you can be filled with the Holy Ghost, but you
you don't need to speak in tongues. And then you get another group who just don't even teach on the Holy Ghost at all. You know, so you get so many different teachings that, that you're wondering, well, what's for me? But if you meditate on John 4, he tells you that there is a living water. All right. I'm going to tell you how simple it is. Come All on. you do is you say, God, just as this woman said, you say, Father, give me this yes, living yes, water. Yes, yes, yes. yes Don't yes, worry yes, about yes, the doctrine. Yes, say, I yes, want this water I that's talked this about water. in John yes, 4. Yes, sir. I want this water that's on, gushing out, yes, sir. bubbling. I want it bubbling yes, up in me. Yes, I don't yes, want to yes. thirst anymore. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. You keep talking you, about Jesus. what you're lacking yes. and what you need. And I don't have this and I don't have that. Yes. And you're keeping a schedule of all your doctor's appointments. Yes. Yes. You need living water. Yes. God is so concerned about you. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not sick. Yes. I've never been sick a day in my life. I've had symptoms. But I've Bless never you. been sick a day in my life. Bless you. And I went to the emergency room last week. And I feel terrible. I've never never felt that way in my entire life. I was like, good gracious, what in the world is going on? And so I can, I can, <laughs> you know, old folks used to say the gas made you feel bad. <laughs> so I said, I said, well, maybe I got gas. I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> I said, well, you know, it, 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 what, what they say to do to help you with that, that didn't help. And everything I tried, it wouldn't help. And by that time, it was 12 minutes. I said, well, if I'm going to the hospital, I better go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because I had waited long enough. And so I go to the emergency room. By this time, there's a burning Ooh. in the middle of my chest. And, oh, boy, I'm telling you, they, if you, the emergency room, you, 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 if you weren't sick when you went there, you'd be sick. You'd yes, sick Lord. and you'd be sick because they wait, make you wait, yes, wait, Lord. and wait, and wait. Yes, and, and, oh, Lord. my goodness. I was so tired. That was the hardest chair. I wanted to lay on the floor. Yeah, I know. I would get in the bed or something. So finally, they did come and get me to take me to a bed. I said, thank you, Jesus. They hooked me up to all kinds of machines, all right? And then somebody comes in probably 4 o'clock in the morning. You know, I was like, dang, am I ever going to get any sleep? Because by that time, I was so tired. 4 a.m., we're admitting you to the hospital. I said, what? <laughs> I thought I was going home. I said, okay. Well, the reason why they wouldn't let me go home is because they really just didn't want the liability. They didn't know what was wrong. And they didn't want to be responsible if there was really something going on. All right? So somebody comes and gets me. I get it. Well, after they told me they were admitting me, they laid me there longer. That aggravating pressure machine, the prophetess knows what I'm talking about, Squeezing your arm every so, I don't know what, half hour or so. That is the most aggravating. You can't get any sleep. Then there was a man out in the uh, center area there, probably a couple of doors down. He was having seizures. And it was all that, oh my goodness, it was some drama going on there. And so every so often they would do their code. Know, they called in the team, yeah, uh -huh. cold blue and all that. I said, this is a noisy place. <laughs> so at any rate, they come to get me maybe uh, 6 o'clock or something like that. Yeah, 
and they get in a wheelchair and, and took me, you know, to take me up, to uh, put me on the ward for observation. So they get me up there, they want to hook me all up again. Now, mind you, I'm not sick. I feel bad, but I'm not sick. I wasn't sick then, I ain't sick now. As a matter of fact, I get in this room and I say, okay, Father. Now, I know that there's nothing wrong with me, even though I feel bad. So there's something to this. Mind you, I told you that all this year he's been taking me to these interesting places. This trip to the hospital was another trip to Samaria. That's all this was. I get in this room, and there actually is a lady in there who's sick. That's really good. The lady had heart problems. She had been diagnosed with breast cancer and a whole host of other things. Okay? So I waited for the physicians to leave. And then by that time, the phys uh, my physician came in and he asked me a series of questions. And he says, well, all your tests, they came back negative. I said, good. I said, does that mean I can go home? He said, yeah. I don't think it took me but 15 or 20 minutes. I was dressed. <laughs> she said, where are you going? <laughs> That's what she said. She said, where are you going? I said, I'm going home. He said, I'm fine. I'm going home. So, so I told her, I said, I'm um, let me introduce myself to you. I told her that I was pastoring and so forth. I said, do you mind if I pray for you? Oh, she said, no. You certainly can pray for me. So I prayed for her. I told her all about what we want to do, be doing overseer. We were going to be fasting signs, wonders, and miracles for 40 days of fasting. We'd be going into the solemn assembly and so forth. So she was very, very interested. He took me to Samaria because there was a woman at the well. God will come and get you. Evangelist Garden, I don't care where you are, where you are, he will come to get you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can be in the hospital bed. He will give me a symptom to come and get you. Yes. I was nothing wrong with me. I'm laying in the hospital with somebody who really was sick. Yes, I've seen it. <laughs> but they won't allow you, to, am I correct? They wouldn't have allowed me to come in there, right? So he had, <laughs> he, he had to give me some symptoms yeah. so I could go in that room. Yeah, I know. <laughs> because I was a stranger to this lady, and she was saying, who in the world are you rolling up in here? People don't take too well the strangers walking up in their room. They want their privacy. As a matter of fact, she told me when I left to close the door. But we were in there just long enough. We talked about the food. And we said, dang, how in the world can you mess up pancakes? This was some of the worst pancakes I think I've ever had in my life. The pancakes wasn't no good. The oatmeal wasn't no good. That's bad you messed up oatmeal. That was bad too. I said, well, we'd be glad to get out here and go get something to eat. Some decent food. I tried to eat it, but it was rough. It was rough. I, couldn't, I couldn't take it. I think I did drink the Joe Orange juice. That was about it. So no matter where you are, laying in the hospital room, laying in the gutter, if you are a lady of the night, or man of the night, because they yeah. had those two. That's right, that's right. You can be in that bed mm -hmm. with that trick, and God will speak to you. It doesn't matter where you are. Yes, sir. That's so true. So true. He's coming to get you. Mm -hmm. And I listened to what this lady said. And she said, I'm going to tell my grandmother that 
that there was a pastor in Hallelujah. the room with me. Bless the Lord. There was a praying grandmother in Bless that family. Yes, now she didn't say that she was necessarily praying. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But the sense I got from that is that that grandmother was praying. And even though I wasn't sick, as a matter of fact, the doctor came to release me. When the uh, nurse came for me to sign the papers of release, she said, you can go because you're not sick. I said, well, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> you know, she wasn't bothering me none. She called herself trying to be smart, but, <laughs> but you know, that didn't bother me. Right, right. I wasn't trying to be sick. Uh -huh. It's enough folk in that hospital already. There is a place where you will never be thirsty. Praise God. Never thirsty. Praise God. Yes. Stop struggling with this. Yes. It really isn't. Just as she said, give me that living water. She wanted this water. He said, you, you won't have to draw it anymore. See, when you have a companion, and, and most people like romantic relationships, but the only problem with romantic relationships, and I've had a few, is you have to keep going back to that well, trying to draw from it, mm -hmm. and sometimes you get nothing. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter whether it's same sex, opposite sex, it's all the same. It's empty. You keep trying to draw. That's true now. And it's nothing. I had a guy to admit to me, and I, I, I'm telling you, he, he must have really, really, really trusted me, liked me, or whatever, because I don't think I would have told anybody this. But he told me, he says, I don't even bother no more with the kissing. I said, what? I said, you ever heard of arousal before? I mean, that, I mean, that almost knocked me over. I, and I don't know why in the world he said that. Now, he just happened to be gay. But I don't think that was important. Okay? Because I believe that there are also straight men who do the same thing. No kind of feeling in it, nothing. It's all mechanical, robotic. That's emptiness. There's a void. And it can happen in marriage too. It's not just single people. Sometimes the reason why married people come to marriage counseling is because the woman is saying that the man, he, he acts like he doesn't love me. He's just going through the motions. It has a limit. Human love has a limit. If you go to 1 Corinthians, love is patient. Love is kind. It is not proud. It is not rude. It keeps no record of wrongs. That's right. Most human beings aren't like that. That is talking about the perfect love of God. God is patient. God is kind. God keeps no record of 
throne. Thank you, Jesus. My God today. Yes. God is not proud. He is not rude. But most human beings won't even make it probably through the first three yes. in that list. That's why you need something greater than the natural. Jesus is speaking to this woman about supernatural things. And finally, he had to tell her her life story. And then she went to run it. She took off. Because she didn't get it at first. He wants you to never thirst again. But you're going to have to go through Samaria. To get this living water. Evangelist, you could not receive the anointing that God has for you without going through this process. Prophetess, you could not get to where he's trying to take you without going through the rejection. It's a part of the process. Joe, you had to suffer. Overseer, he says, I'm so sorry. He said, I would have loved to have your mother there. But if you had not experienced that, you would not have gone through Samaria. You had to. There was a need for that. He wants you to forgive him. See, oftentimes we haven't forgiven God because we feel he's responsible for some of the pain that we've suffered. Okay. But he says, forgive me. Forgive me. And I guarantee you, spring up in you will be far greater than any pain you've ever suffered. My Lord. My Lord. Ask him tonight to give you that living water. Thank you, Jesus. You cannot go forward in ministry without it. You have to have even if you feel that you are flowing in the prophetic, you can always have more anointing. There's no such thing as too much anointing. There was a gentleman that I think is one of the greatest prophets and ministers 